Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for this pre-recorded workshop on OER discovery and remix. We're really excited to be walking you through the basics of finding and remixing OER today. My name is Monica Brown. I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I'm the assistant program manager at Rebus Community. I'm joined today by Amy Song. I'll go ahead and turn it over to Amy to introduce herself. Thanks so much, Monica. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Amy Song, and I'm the customer success manager at Pressbooks. Uh, we're a sister organization to Rebus, and we work closely together with different but aligned goals and objectives. So I'm thrilled to present on something that we collectively think a lot about, um, which is adapting and remixing OER. Yes, thank you. You'll, you've seen in the session description that this is a interactive workshop. Um, this, of course, can be a little tricky to do since we are doing it in a pre-recorded format, but please know that we're really excited to engage with you all on our OER discovery journeys. So um, to do this, we ask that you join us over on Twitter uh, using the hashtag evaluating OER to share with us what you find and what you plan to use in your teaching. Throughout Open Ed Global, we will be replying and retweeting those contributions to the conversation, and we hope to see you there. Today, we're going to provide you up with a brief overview of methods for finding and evaluating OER. Then we will dig a bit deeper into Remix so that you have a clear sense of all the possibilities OER has for your classroom. Let's get started. Before you dive too far into your search, we encourage folks to take a step back and think about what it is they're actually looking for. While it can be tempting to first kind of go out there and see what's out there, it can also be overwhelming and lead to running in circles. Instead, it's important to get clear on what you are searching for. If you need a sounding board, a librarian or instructional designer at your campus may be able to help you articulate your needs. This is an opportunity to also think big and to consider not just what your course materials have previously covered, but also about what you hope they can cover in the future. You can use your student learning outcomes and previous syllabi to help identify key terms that you'll want to use for your search. It's an opportunity to consider if the ideal resource existed, how would I, I describe it? What features would it have? What topics would it cover? What ancillary resources would help you integrate it into your course? Once you've identified the key topics and terms, as well as the potential features you'd like to see, we can shift over into the search process. Discovering OER can be a bit challenging as there is no single comprehensive search tool, um, but to make the process easier, we recommend keeping track of your search terms and moving kind of methodically through repositories rather than backtracking. On this slide, we've provided you a list of a few key OER repositories to consider. We've also linked these and more in the worksheet provided below. Um, and you'll hear more a deeper dive into the Pressbooks directory shortly. Um, but all of these can be great resources for seeing what's out there and trying to find those components that you want your course to cover. Now that you know where to look, you can begin the evaluation process. So how does this start? As you're going through each repository, evaluation really starts during that search process. So make use of filters. This will help you efficiently get a sense of how current, accessible, and comprehensive resources you are considering are. It's also fairly easy to do a quick skim through of the table of contents before saving a resource to ensure that's covering the needed areas that you are looking for. It's also important to be thinking about things like the diversity of authors, inclusive images, icons, illustrations, and multimedia. Once again, these are things that are fairly easy to see when you're looking through your resource. Um, and so keep an eye out for them during this initial search process. At this point, you'll want to do a more comprehensive and thorough review of the resources once you've got a nice organized list. You may want to use the, a rubric to organize your thoughts as you compare material, because it's highly likely that you'll find some materials that are um, covered in multiple ways across different resources. So when you're comparing those things, a rubric can be very helpful. On our worksheet, we've provided you with an evaluation criteria provided by BC Campus. There's also an incredible OpenStax diversity and representation in OER rubric that can help you think through of some elements to look for in resources, particularly when you're looking for that inclusivity. Another thing I'll also nudge you to do is make ease, uh, look for the ease of mapping it to your course. See if the technology will integrate easily to your institution's courseware and use our evaluation worksheet throughout this process because 
as you're looking at multiple things, it can be easy to get mixed up and not remember which piece was from where. Um, so making sure that you're kind of being methodical and thorough with how you're documenting this process can really help in the long run. Of course, if you do come to a point where you're not able to find what you need, you can consider creating your own. Um, now, you might have some hesitations, uh, not too sure what this publishing process might entail, who needs to participate in the skill set required. Um, these concerns really remind us that the creation of OER involves something much more than coming up with appropriate and innovative content. Writing, editing, reviewing are often the most visible parts of the publishing process, and we're all aware of them. We tend to forget that there's a lot of invisible labor that's happening behind the scenes when it comes to publishing. With this in mind, it is not surprising that many first time creators require some guidance as they get started. This is precisely why it's important to have access to professionals who can serve as a sounding board and offer advice as situations demand. And community makes all the difference. Rebus Community's focus is a collaborative OER publishing uh, ecosystem. And we've documented our workflow and process in an openly licensed guide. We're also working hands-on with creators through our Open te uh, Textbook Success Program, which is a year-long professional development program for those interested in creating OER. We'll actually be hearing from some of uh, these grantees at upcoming sessions, and we're excited to share that with you. While this program is focused specifically on longer form resources, we are hoping to launch a shorter term program on ancillary education. Uh, ancillary material creation in the next year or so. Keep your eye out. This is an ideal program if you want a little additional guidance and support working through the process of remixing. On this slide, we've compiled, I've compiled a few key resources mentioned throughout this portion of the presentation um, for your reference. As I said earlier, make use of the evaluation worksheet, lean on the rubrics provided by other organizations and um, feel free to use our guide. It's available openly and freely on the internet to, to help you think through the process of revising and remixing resources. With that said, I'll now hand it over to Amy to talk a little bit more about the ways to leverage the Pressbooks directory. Thank you, Monica, for such a fantastic presentation. Um, this segues really nicely into the next part of this presentation. So today I'll be showing you around the um, Pressbooks directory and uh, providing examples of adapted books and sharing some valuable resources that are loved by us and that we love sharing. So much of creating, uh, creating content um, following open principles rely on different functioning parts that work together efficiently and effectively. My goal for this presentation today is for you to feel confident looking for and finding suitable OER and have the resources necessary started with modifying it to fit your needs. So the first thing I want to show is the Pressbooks directory. It is a ever-growing referatory of all of the public books available in the Pressbooks world. All of the books in this directory are free to access, read and download, and you do not require a Pressbooks subscription to be able to read and reuse this content. So I'll provide a short demo of this directory, how you can use it to find the resources you're looking for to remix. So uh, you, I just have to come to pressbooks.directory to find this open page. And starting at the top, information about what the directory is and what it can do. Sliding further down, we hit the curated collection section. We'll come back to that in a little bit. And beneath that is where you can search for the book. Start by taking the whole page in, looking at what kind of tools are available for me to, to search for exactly what I'm looking for. On the left-hand side, you can see a variety of different filters that are available, and there's also a search and sort bar along the top as well. And you're able to share this query if you like what you find. Let's say that I wanted to um, find a book uh, to adapt to meet my needs maximally. You might opt for a CCBY license. Or if I want to find a psychology book, I can look under subject and either find it uh, down in the list itself, or you can also search for the subject that you're looking for. So I'll select that. You can click through the different filters to find exactly what you're looking for. And in each of the books which get filtered, you'll see the institution um, that the book is from, uh, the title of the book itself, which if clicked on, it will take you to the book. There's other important information like the size and the authors and the subject. 
um, and other interesting OER information, such as the license being used, whether or not this book is an original uh, or it is an adaptation, and the number of H5P interactive activities. Information like this can supplement your search and make your adapted content more robust. If you're looking to remix from many different resources, you can browse and download different H5P activities by clicking on this link here, which lists the number of the H5P activities, and upon clicking on will take you to the page with all of the uh, H5P activities on it, and incorporate them into an existing book or an, uh, an existing chapter or an already adapted book. You can find a chapter that you like from one book and another and another chapter from another book and amalgamate them into what we call at Pressbooks a Franken book. We, you are only limited by the license that the original book has in its current version. So there's so much that you can do in terms of adopting your content, adopting um, content that's uh, written by someone else and really make it your own. If you'd like a formal lesson on how to get the most out of the directory, you can uh, take the tour uh, of the directory by clicking on the button at the top right hand corner of the page. The search bar is also responsive. Keep in mind that the search, filter, and sort functions can be used in conjunction with each other so that you can look as broadly or find something as specific as you need. We also have curated collections that our Pressbooks librarian Travis has curated specifically to be adopted and adapted for the classroom. There are many to explore and you can have a look to see if any of them pique your interest. So here is an excellent example of a textbook that's been adopted. You can see the original on the left-hand side and on the right is the adopted textbook, which is a combination of three different textbooks to include study skills, time management, as well as career and decision-making skills. The adopted version won a textbook success award and was published under a CCBY license for further possibility of adoption by others. Lastly, similar to what Monica had presented, uh, I wanted to provide a slide about resources because all great ideas and projects can come to life beautifully when backed by great practices. In addition to, like I said, the teachings from Rebus earlier on, I also wanted to include these resources so that they could perhaps help you on your project planning and execution if you choose to look at these slides later. This is a small sample pool of resources and there are many more available online. Make sure to do ample research. Information can be easily aggregated when planning for your OER project, so take advantage of it. Great, thank you so much, Amy. Um, we hope that this brief presentation has provided you with some helpful context and insight into the process of discovering OER. As a quick reminder, please join us over on Twitter using the hashtag, hashtag evaluating OER to share uh, with us what you find and what you plan to use in your teaching. Um, we'll be over there and we're excited to see what you all find. We've also provided our contact information here on the last slide in case you're interested in getting involved with either of our organizations um, on your OER journey. Uh, looking forward to engaging and if you have any questions, please feel free to share them. Thank you all. Thank you.